Hello and welcome to this course on Puppet Fundamentals. My name is Yogesh Raheja and we are going through Puppet for Absolute Beginners course. Let us look at some other topics in Puppet. In this section, we will go through some advanced concepts. There are no exercises for these, as these are more of concepts than code. Also, these are out of scope for this beginner's course. And hopefully, I will get to make an advanced course with coding exercises for some of these topics. But it is important that you have a high level idea of the additional capabilities and support in Puppet so that if you wish, you could refer to the Puppet documentation page and get these done yourself. So we are going to breeze through these topics which includes overview about Puppet variables, built-in variables called facts, Puppet modules, Puppet roles and profiles, Hira, M Collective, and finally, ready-made Puppet modules website called Puppet Forge. So, what are variables? Variables are an essential part of any scripting language or automation tool. Variables are used to store values so that they can be accessed later. Puppet uses variables to make reuse of same parameter over and again to make the Puppet code management more generic. Variables are always prefixed with a dollar sign and values are assigned by an equal to sign. Variable names are case sensitive and can include lowercase or uppercase letters, numbers and underscores in Puppet. Let us check this Puppet code where we have defined dollar message variable with a value magic of Puppet automation and have then used the same with content attribute. Rest of the process will be the same. Puppet facts are a way of gathering data about Puppet agents. This data consists of host information, kernel information, network information, IP addresses, CPU, memory, file system, disk details, and much more. Puppet uses a utility called factor to provide this detail. The returned output of factor is in key value pairs, also called facts. All facts available in factor can be used with any classes and gives us the ability to customize our node configuration. You can list specific facts by adding the names of the fact you wish to know. Even if you want the information on a particular parameter returned by the list of factor output, that can also be done using dot notation. Puppet modules are self-contained bundle of code and data. We learned about Puppet resources, which are the basic building block of Puppet. Next, we learned about Puppet classes, which are the collection of Puppet resources bundled together as a single unit. Puppet modules are next in the Puppet hierarchy. In layman's terms, Puppet modules are the collection of Puppet resources and Puppet classes bundled together as a single unit. Puppet modules will have their own directory structure, which contains a manifest directory where we write Puppet codes. This is also known as modules manifests and is the place where we write Puppet code using Puppet resources and classes. Puppet module is a well-defined directory structure where we keep our Puppet code composed of Puppet resources and Puppet classes. Modules directory structure allows us to use any resource, variable, static files, templates in the same but structured way as we have been using till now. Puppet modules helps us to make our Puppet code more generic, reusable and which can be shared with anyone. Puppet code creation process will remain the same. But now, with the help of modules, the process will be even more structured. We will develop our Puppet code inside modules directory using Puppet resources and classes and declare the classes inside main manifest which is site.pp file. Puppet will automatically compile the catalog using main manifest and modules manifest. 
So we have installed Puppet, created Puppet modules with awesome automation expertise. Everything in our automation environment is working fine. This is one of the commonly used Puppet design model. But this model doesn't fit everywhere. Consider a case where you are developing modules at rapid pace and assigning them to the nodes by including them inside main manifests. After some time, you will see the manifest file is getting bigger, complex and unmanageable. In such cases, assigning modules directly into manifest is not a good design model and we need to look around for some other solutions. This is where Puppet Roles and Profile Model will help us to manage rapid growing Puppet environment. Puppet Roles and Profiles are similar to Puppet Modules. In this model, we will include multiple Puppet Modules inside Puppet Profiles and assign Puppet Profile Modules inside Puppet Roles. By doing this, we will keep the manifest compact and easy to manage. There are some other use cases where Puppet profiles and roles are preferred models. Some to name are the environments which are scaling at pace or are having multiple infrastructure environments like development, testing, UAT, prod and DR or are having multiple similar kind of application setup or are heterogeneous in nature with multiple operating systems. Puppet roles and profiles are two topmost layers in Puppet architecture. Let's look at a sample Puppet code used for configuring NTP on servers. It contains class NTP used to configure NTP settings on a server along with some data about NTP server which happens to be pole.ntp.org. If I wanted to share this code with someone else, they may have to modify the NTP server name based on their requirements. And hence, having such data inside the code is not a very good idea as it makes it difficult to share and reuse the code. Hira allows us to move such data out of the code files into a separate file dedicated for storing data. Hira is Puppet's built-in key value configuration data lookup system. It allows for the separation of data from our Puppet code. Puppet modules can look up information they need within Hira, allowing for Puppet code to run specific configuration on specific nodes. We are no longer have to cater for different configurations in our modules, and this makes them run quickly and keeps our code precise and clear. Marionette Collective also known as M Collective or MCO, is a framework for executing jobs in parallel. MCO will reverse the original Puppet model from pull-based to push-based. You will be able to perform quick ad hoc tasks from Puppet Master Server. Some of the use cases to mention are inventory collection, quick reports, vulnerability management by pushing and installing quick patch or packages etc. The setup of MCO with open source Puppet is little tedious and may need some workarounds to get MCO up and running. Puppet Forge is the official website for users to search, download, install and use Puppet modules. It is a repository of over 5500 plus pre-written Puppet modules. In fact, Puppet Forge is a common place to search and use Puppet modules for both open source as well as Puppet Enterprise Edition. Puppet module is the utility used to perform Puppet Forge operations. Let us explore Puppet Forge with a short demo. So, to conclude, we discussed about various topics surrounding Puppet, what Puppet is and what we can do with Puppet how to set up and install Puppet. We also looked into some essential Puppet concepts like Puppet resources, classes, manifests, node definitions, etc. Finally, we also looked at some advanced topics. You should now be in a position to start developing your own Puppet codes and start testing them. 
remember to refer to the Puppet documentation site to stay updated with the new versions and updates. This is a basic course and hopefully I will get to develop an advanced course covering some advanced topics. So thank you so much for your time and I hope you had a great learning experience. Do let me know your feedback or if you notice any issues with any of the exercises. Once again, thank you very much and keep automating.